Mind your feet, girls. Watch out for the hoses. What, we on fire? No, love. Just giving it a once over. Just testing your dry riser. Only two drawing pins. We've got a theory in Redwatch. You eat like sweets like you do the bog paper. <laughs> Another one of your dead or alive posters, is it, Jaffa? Anyone who is not actually buried, who has four limbs, two eyes and a nose, is wanted for use as a punch bag by the LFB Boxing Club. <laughs> you know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call Jaffa Jaffa? Because he's seedless, isn't he? And the same up as a cat. Ah. Oh. Southwest Area Charity Boxing Challenge. So what's all this about, eh? Well, this middleweight from the Southwest Area is throwing down a gauntlet to any other middleweights from the other four areas who think they can last ten rounds with him in the ring. Of course, before they meet him, they'll have to meet each other. And the winner of that will meet him. Conquer Coburn, they call him. Who? Huh? So who are we entering from our area? Well, that's the problem. I don't think we've got anybody. The middleweight was to represent us is now a member of the New York Fire Department. Cleaned us out of our best boxers, they did, the bastards. Took no prisoners. But that's outrageous. Our area simply can't not compete. It's a matter of honour, isn't it? What? Might as well knock it on the head, fellas. I'm not going into any boxing competition. I hung my gloves up six years ago. And I haven't had a serious dig at anyone in all that time. And I ain't fit. Get fit. It's two weeks before the first bout, right? I'd need months of training and dieting to get anywhere near fitness. You're out of your box, a lot of you. George, there is nobody else who could possibly represent this area except you. Have any of you ever seen Conquer Cobra? It can't be that hot if the New York Fire Department didn't make him enough where he couldn't refuse. <laughs> He's 19 years of age. He's built like a brick carsey. He's got a right on him like a steam hammer. And he's so fast that the only actual time we see him is when he's fast asleep. I'm 27 years of age. I haven't trained or had a pair of gloves on in all that time. And I ain't giving Conquer Cobra the chance to wipe the floor with me. Do you know a Roland round here? Roland? Yeah. No, I've never heard of him, mate. Right? No. no. This Roland stitched me up for a ton, right? Now, I know he's a fine. And I hear on the great bell, and this is where he hangs out. Well, I hate to blind you with science, old chap, but there are four watches on every station. Red, white, green and blue. Now, he's not in blue because we are, and he's not in red because they've just come on. So maybe this uh, Roland, whoever he is, is on green or white, so maybe you should call back and ask again when they're on. Why do I get the feeling that you bunch are trying to take me for a ride? See you later, champ. George. See ya. All right. What's all that about? <sighs> nice bloke, isn't he? <laughs> As soon as I've got the money to get it, I'll pay him off. Be all right. I don't want to know. <laughs> George, please, mate. You said it'd be all right if I hung around with you for a while till I sort the whole thing out. Well, yeah, stay at my place, but I've got some business to do with Cyril. Punters. Listen, Big Eddie catches up with me. I'm a classic case of death, ain't I? Well, the geezer's going to top you because you owe him a ton. You don't know him, mate. He done time for GBH. Nutter. Used to be a meat cutter down at Smithfield. 
He amputated his own brother's ears just because he broke the wing mirrors on his van. We better do something today. Cheers, mate. Just one thing. If you're staying at my place, where's Marion staying? I don't know. Maybe she'll stop with her dad. Yeah. But what if she don't stay around her dad's? What if she stays at your place and that roofer slips around and smashes it up? I mean, she's pregnant. Well, it ain't my fault. What Marion's made medical history, is she? Weren't you that made her pregnant? It was a virus. Motor. What's the sales job? Lost the company car. Lost job seemed to be the story of your life. No lost wife. Lost him too. Leading fireman strip firewoman's course. What do you want to be, leading fireman or leading firewoman? Ah, holiday brochures for Spain. Thinking about taking holiday? Thinking about it. What, with Bayleaf? Yeah, me, Bayleaf, and the whole of Blue Watch. We're hiring a small jet. We'll all muck in and share the one hotel bedroom, of course. I'm going on my own. I joined night classes to learn the lingo. Well, 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 our ambitions have certainly soared since we decided to become a single girl again. It is just your record player and your records you want for the moment, is it? Yes, thanks. For the moment. So when do you expect to be out then? In a few days. They, uh, they give me a card to go down outpatients next week. Keep an eye on me, sort of thing. Well, it's, it's not the burns. They're more or less all right now. It's the uh, head injury. I suppose they're worried there might be a drastic change in my personality. Well, anything you want, anything you need. Oh, I really appreciate what all you lads and the Gov and Mrs. State have done for me. Well, you, you treat me like a brother. It's times like this, you really know your mates are. Oh, and uh, by the way, it's all over between me and Donna. It was it was quite amicable and very civilised. What, you mean she's not living around your place no more? You mean you said move out and she just said, OK? Well, she's got no reason to be around at my gaff anymore, has she? Now it's all over between us. Look, I hate to mention this because I know it's a sore point. But when she moved into Liversalt's house, he had to take her to court to get rid of her. And then she got half of everything he had. Don't worry about me, lads. I made it quite clear to her that I wanted her to vacate my place before I come out of hospital. I can look after myself. There's no flies on me. This police LP. I bought it for you as part of a Christmas present. Well, those nice leather gloves. Whatever happened to them? You lost one of them the night you went to see Jaws, remember? <laughs> it's probably still under the seat where you were hiding. <laughs> it was the same night you got poisoned by the brawn curry. Yeah. Happy days. Some of them were happy. Lilac wine. Very definitely yours. Jerry, I haven't said this before. Maybe now's a good time to say it. I hope we're not going to go on being bitter with each other. I don't hold any grudges. I hope you won't either. John and me are off to the pictures now, Dad. Be back about 11, all right? You stay as late as you like, love. Kids will be all right with me. Dear, you want to take her out for a nice meal somewhere afterwards. She don't get out enough. I'm always saying that. Yeah, I'm always saying that too. All right, point taken. If it's not too late when we come out of the pictures, we'll get a meal after. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. 
you very much. Uh, good evening. We'll start. <laughs> 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 Senorita, buenas tardes. Do we have our date for our usual drink after class? I don't know what's usual about it. One Spanish class I've been to, and once I've had a drink with you. There's any need to be quite so defensive about it. Or do you habitually snap men's heads off when they simply offer to buy you a drink? You're right. I'm sorry. Just feeling a bit cheesed off tonight. Of course I'll have a drink with you. But on one condition, I buy my round. That's something I won't apologise for. Joe Barbara makes the break. And the red drops in the middle pocket. Red's gone, Lee. Joe Barbara, 37 years of age. Okay, and of course, on the other hand, a much younger gentleman, all the way uh, from Holloway. Father lives in Ireland, mum lives in London. Pat O'Kane. Uh, Going up now, love. Go easy on the sauce. Try not to be too late. You're a very independent girl, and I do respect you for that, but you cannot hang around waiting for a bus at this time of night. One, it's bitterly cold. Two, you can't rely on the damn things even during the day. And three, I would be very worried leaving you here to get home on your own. Come on, don't be silly. Let me run you home. OK, thanks. It's very kind. I don't suppose I get invited in for a cup of coffee. All right, then, if you won't spare my blushes, I am bursting for a... <laughs> Why didn't you say? Because I'm a shy suburban accountant and I was very carefully brought up not to broadcast my needs. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Might as well have that coffee. Ah, the ice maiden melteth. Jolly good. So, how old are you, Edith? Seventy-four. Oh. And how long have you been living at the old folks' home? Sandra? Five years. Won't Matron be worried about you being out so late, love? Sandra, she said 74, not 14. When you're being an incredibly brave London firefighting lady, what do you wear? Rubber boots, waterproof leggings and a very fetching yellow cork helmet. Mm. Well, I should imagine a man might learn to find that very sexy. I should imagine a man would be very odd if he did. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that those incredibly brave London firefighting gentlemen don't find you sexy when you're on the job? No, because those incredibly brave London firefighting gentlemen are generally far too busy doing their job to think about whether they find me sexy or not. Don't. Don't do that. I don't like being teased and I don't like blokes who piss about like little boys. I find it tedious. Yeah. <laughs> 
Lucas a brown of you, you bastard! I mean it! I'm sorry. Simply because you're near me, darling, whenever you're near me, I'm in the mood for love. You won't believe this, but that old nutcase, Albert, has found himself a 74-year-old bit of stuff. Me and Sandra came home from the pictures the other night and found him naked on the sofa. Are you sure that's all they were doing? Naked? Well, I bloody well hope that's all they were doing. So do I, John, for your sake. Because let's face it, the last thing you need turning up on your doorstep is a 74-year-old unmarried mother. It's pathetic. All the other areas except our area. Southeast area have been able to find a contender to challenge Conquer Coburn. It's not on, fellas. He knows Kurt Winger, don't you, George? Who? North area contender. Used to call him Stinger Winger. I don't know why. It's because, excuse me, he comes at you with his fast thing in flurries. But the danger in that sort of fire is, see, he's got fast hands. So he works about the eyes and the cheekbones to open them up. But he's got a glass jaw, so one good <coughs> shot on the old button. And it's good night, nurse. Yes, George. What? He's a friend of yours, then, this stinger winger. He loves me like a brother. Mm. Twice I've broken his jaw, twice I've put him out for the full count. George. You could be a contender. I'll oh, leave it out. About a century ago, yeah. Now look, George. I reckon you'd be better back at your place, Gov. You don't really look up to it today. You suddenly got medical qualifications, did you? No, Gov, it's just... Well, when I want your opinion about whether or not I'm fit to be on watch, I'll ask for it. If there's not four boxers to compete, there's no contest. No contest, no money. Someone who needs a kidney machine might die. Some poor spina bifida kid who needs an operation might never walk again. Some old folks in the twilight of their lives who were looking forward to seeing the sea just once more before they died might never see it <clears throat> ever again. George, it's your duty. Frankly, I don't know how I'd live with my conscience if it was me. Guide dogs for the blind. <sighs> oh, bloody hell. All right. <laughs>
Can you clear the lift, please, folks? There's a fire upstairs. Clear the lift. Thank you. As quickly as you can, please. Kevin, you stop in the lift. Communications, man. Kevin, go back down and get the guns. Bloody hell, why wasn't it checked? We checked it last watch. Some bastards vandalised the update. Someone checked that one down there. This one's knackered and all gone. Start up in fresh air, George. Fire brigade. Fire brigade, anybody there? <laughs> Get back down and tell them we're going to have to haul the hose up. There you go! This is no job for an extinguisher! Sit down, Gav. Take a breather. Can't rely on anything going smooth in this game, John. But two things I always hoped I could rely on, apart from the lads, was that barring an act of God, an appliance would always get us to a shout fast enough to save lives, and that we'd always be able to pump water fast enough to save lives once we got there. Your ears burning a bit bad, are they, George? Yeah, as if someone's talking about me. It's probably Conquer Coburn, saying he's going to wipe the floor with me. You just need your confidence building up again, that's all. If I write only a brain scan, see if I've still got one up there. Well, and that. He's eloped. Oh, John, do you think we should inform the police? Sandra, they're not exactly underage, are they? Want a lift? Cheers. What happened to your motor? Jerry borrowed it and just didn't bring it back.
I tell you, I wish I could get my hands on whoever vandalised that dry riser. Yeah, makes you all the lowest form of life, doesn't it? Makes you ashamed to be a human being. What would you be if you weren't a human being? I don't know. But something with only a very rudimentary nervous system. What, like an earthworm? <laughs> Look, I don't know how you're fixed, but uh, I've got a date with a boy in the back curry I could easily break. Well, no problem. Uh, you've probably got a date. I'll just swallow me cuppa and push off. That's not what you think. Well, it's none of my business, is it? Look, I almost got raped here last night. I turn up at work and you and everyone else jump to the conclusion it's got to be the result of a night of passion. Certainly looks a business, doesn't he? Very, very tasty. Given the right psychological approach, it'll be a real mean machine in a couple of weeks' time. Well, his odds aren't a big conquer Coburn in my book, anyway. What book? It was this bloke I met at Spanish class. Looked just like an ordinary human being. Said he was an accountant. But guess what? When the bill checked up at the address he'd given at night school, there was no such place. You should have said. Stayed home, rung in sick, rung me. I mean... Look, if I hadn't gone to work, I'd have been sitting here alone, asking myself over and over again if I did anything to encourage him. My, I'm so bloody angry with myself. I'm trying to make excuses for that bastard. I mean, why do I feel guilty? Anyone would think he was the victim. You should have said... It's OK. I'm all right. All I want to do now is forget it ever happened. God, Jos. He could have killed you. I mean... Mike. Look. You know how I feel. I'd do anything for you. You know that. Mike, yeah, I... I know, I know, I know. You don't have to say it. It ain't on between us for loads of reasons. Us being in the same watch and all that. Yeah, I'd never heard the end of it. I mean, it's straight out of the Old Testament, isn't it? Daughter of Eve seduces mess manager. <laughs> Mike, I don't know how I feel about you, cos I'm not over Jerry yet. One thing I do know, you love your wife and kid. You're lonely, missing them like hell now, but... Yeah, well... I don't know if me, Karen and Melanie will ever work out. But you want it to work out. And if you want it to work out, you'll make it work out. Cos you're that sort of bloke. If you could break that date with the ball in the bag curry, we could go Dutch on a Chinese. Come on, put your bag into it. Come on, you mouth, she's done a fight. Looking good, Jen. Looking good. Come on, George, what about and about bloody time. I've been calling you since seven. Do you know what the time is now? Fine start to me day off, yelling myself false, trying to get you up and out of it. We should have had a lie-in. A lie-in? You wouldn't have had nothing to eat. You would have gone on watch with nothing in your stomach. And then you get a few good shouts. You don't have a chance to eat properly till you get home. And then what happens? You get ulcers on top of everything else. Anyway, fat chance of me getting any sleep if I did have a lie-in. Cos you get lost in space when you're looking for your gear. Where's my shirt, Nance? Where's my clean socks, Nance? Where's my head, Nance? That's what I've had every morning I've tried to have a lie-in since you and me got married. That egg's runny. I turned it over like I always do. Anyway, I haven't got time. Right. Maybe 
Skipper, you'd have time to eat a decent breakfast, Sydney, if you wasn't sunked out on scotch every night. Appearing in here every morning with hangover, looking like the creature from the bloody Black Lagoon. I ain't got time for one of your fights either, Nancy. I've told you you should see a doctor. Cos how you're going on ain't right. I don't know how you are with Blue Watch, Sydney, but you want to know something? These past few weeks with me, you ain't been no fun. from every member of Red Watch that George K.O. Stinger winger in the seventh round of the first bout next week. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's just one thing Red Watch want to know. Say he don't K.O. Stinger winger in the seventh. Red Watch has lost its bet. Yeah, but uh, what happens to the money? Ah, oh, uh, well, a percentage of it is going to the LFB charity fund. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate on what you mean, um, exactly, by a percentage? Uh, well... He's eloped to bloody Edinburgh. Oh, I don't know, some old girl from the old folks home. <laughs> yeah, guess what? John's father-in-law's eloped with some old girl from the old folks home. Seriously, John. And as a matter of some urgency, I should inform Interpol. The guy from mission, is he? Just been on to his missus. Left his gaff, as per usual, in good time to get on watch. Must have got smiled up in the traffic or something. Asked me to ask him to give her a bell when he gets in. Apparently, had a bit of a barney with him. Well, he hasn't been easy to live with lately. Well, you know, it's like me and Jean. You know, we have a row. Always try and patch it up before I come on the watch. Just in case anything happens to me. Yeah, well, looking on the bright side, I suppose there is just a chance you might choke on one of your headache tablets. <laughs> I'm drowning your bloody folk linked us. <laughs> no, no, all right, all right, all right, stop polluting me air, will you? There's a bloody working fire station to run here. Malcolm, you give us a hand a roll call, all right? Right. So, uh, should I make the nine o'clock log booking saying the governor in here for roll call? No. Leave it. Blue Watch, Blue Watch, shun. For your duties, fall out. Mike, uh, have you got a minute? I don't know how you do it. You know I'm in a bit of a spot here, Mike, don't you? Over a barrel, really. I mean, strictly speaking, I mean, according to brigade orders, I should have ended him absent from duty with no reason given at nine o'clock and reported it to area staff. Yeah, but what should happen and what does happen are two different things, aren't they, John? You're just doing what any firefighter worth his salt would do in your shoes, protecting the governor at all costs. Yeah, but my job's on the line. Who's going to protect me if you don't show up? I mean, I'm duty-bound to go through correct procedure. This is a disciplined service. I can't go on much longer pretending he's there when he's not here. And he's not bloody well here, so why the hell hasn't he rung in? He knows the procedure better than any of us. John, he might have had an accident. Do what you were gonna do. Ring the bill in the alias, make sure he's not a stretcher case. And then what? Keep him till 25 past nine. Yeah, all right. On the way to go. Uh, 25 past nine. Well, neither the bill nor the LAS have any news of him. I've asked him to check again. Well, that's it. Enter it in the log that the governor's absent from duty with no reason given. I'm on the blow to area staff.
He's known to us. Bobby Whitby, builder's labor, lives around the corner. Well, the thing is, he's threatening to jump unless we bring his girlfriend to him. I reckon he means it. Why well, don't you bring her? Yeah, well, that's a bit difficult to see, because she's dead. That's his sister over there. Mary! They'll get him down, will you? He was, he was driving the car when the smash happened what killed her. He's brain damaged. He keeps asking for her and I... I try to tell him over and over again. He just don't understand. It, it don't sink in. Hey, bloke, how do you think he'll react when you go up there? I think when he sees you and and she's not with you for him, he'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> Planning an indecent assault on you, am I? I? Just want to make sure that you make a grab for him. I'm going to make a grab for you. Well, just remember, I'm married. Well, good job! It's all right, Lorraine. I'll be all right, Lorraine. Where's my Lorraine? It's all right, Bobby. She's on her way. We're here to help her so she can come and have a word with you. Oh, I need her. I need to speak to her. Where is she? Now! Grab it! Hey! Right, hey! 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 Enjoy your trip. Oh, you! You owe me a chat! Let's go! Come here! Hey, Hold it! Hold it! Eddie, it's not my motor! Bust in the end! Put it there, no. mate. You're right, George. Oh, God. Not to hang around. I mean, I will. No, you know what he's like. He'll create a scene, I couldn't handle it. He's probably just decided to bring the car back. Oh dear. I do hope I didn't put Bayleaf off coming in. I thought we'd get an early night. Well, we're both pretty bushed. What with all the sex orgies and that. Anywhere out of it, I don't know. Why didn't you bring the car back, Jerry? I needed it. Got delayed. I nearly got raped the other night because you didn't bring it back like you promised. What are you talking about? 
some bloke from the Spanish class gave me a lift home. Well, that'll teach you to venture into pastures new without checking out the undergrowth first. You really don't give a damn, do you? Do you? It's all the post, is it? Yeah, I don't have an address of your new bed set. Actually, it's quite an old bed set. Quite an old seedy bed set, actually. Why didn't you bring the car back, Jerry? I needed it. I was looking for another job. Why didn't you ask? Perhaps I didn't trust you to say yes again. Anyway, you seem to have done all right, but then you women do, don't you? I mean, you've had Bailey ferrying you around, probably fluttered your eyelashes at this chap from your Spanish class. See you around. Well, so much for the Conquer Coburn boxing contest. It ain't my fault, is it? Anyone who's anyone that odds bound to hurt his hands, especially without gloves. It doesn't mean I can't work or anything. It just means that I can't hit anyone for a while. Exactly. Well, personally, I'm gutted. I had a bloody good book going. Sounds that? That's four eighty. Oh, I'll right, keep that. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I didn't think you'd be here. Donna, can I have a word with you, please, in private? Uh, Leslie, there's a little green bowl with uh, peach tint mixed in the kitchen. Fetch it for us, would you, love? I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist. Leslie, just do as you're told. Please. I've got to have these two out by 12 o'clock because I've got three perms, an exhibition punk and a casual wave to do this afternoon. Please, Leslie. I thought, I'm not bloody fit to go and watch. Should have come home and rung in, but... Oh, I don't know. Oh, you've been a bit tight in the carriage for a long time, Gov. We all knew you needed a break. Yeah, it's nothing to be ashamed of, Gav. Yeah. Only I feel I've let you lads down. You've never done that yet, Gav. And you never will. I reckon it was the gearbox going on the pump that did it. And then that IRA shout the other day just knocked it on the head. Lives were lost because of that gearbox. I've been wetting myself on the quiet ever since then. Bells go down, my heart's pounding, mouth dry, hands wet with sweat. All in the, all the time asking myself, what's going to go wrong this time? Don't tell the lads. Anyway, I ain't being suspended. I ain't being logged out of the service. Station commander came to see me, uh, had a word, then had a word with the powers that be, and then got on a blow to me. Gonna give me a week sick leave. Sydney, he said, station commander. Saying that we're chump. You've given 25 years loyal service to the London Fire Brigade. This is the first time you've ever blotted your copybook. Gov, you bloody are the London Fire Brigade. I'll leave all that for a minute, Leslie. Just pop in the kitchen and put the kettle on for a cup of tea for us. Oh, and while you're in there, can you fetch that little dustpan and brush and just sweep that air up there? 
gone up. I asked you to get out of my house before I come out of hospital and you've turned it into a hairdressing salon. Leslie, have you done anything yet about compensation from the brigade for your injuries? Once you come to see me when I was in hospital, once. I told you then, you and me getting together was a bad idea. I was lonely when Mum died. And you come along and I was happy. But you made a right mug out of me. And all I want you to do now is just go, please. Donna, please, just go. All right. If it's going to upset you, I'll put the kettle on and fetch the dustpan and brush. Please, stop right, shoot! So what was up with the gun then? I was just uh, a little bit daft, that's all. Needed a bit of a break. So why didn't he phone in? Uh, he... Yeah, it sounds like a whitewash to me. Now, look. He's back next week. There's going to be no questions asked, no comments made. Understand? Find me the girl. And find me the killer. I want to get to go down the streets. Jimmy Bartholomew. Ain't you got no home to go to? What? As it happens, no. That guy with the shotgun. Too quick, too cool. Somehow he doesn't fit into this. Look, it's two pimps fighting over a few tarts or a piece of territory or whatever. No way. There's something more I can smell. Hmm. Well, while you smell it, I need a shower to change my clothes. Yeah, don't forget to shave. Now listen, remember what I said, no questions, no comments, just business as per usual, all right? Of course. Hey, hey, now. Go on the roll. Come on, hurry up. Blue Watch, Blue Watch, Shen. What's your names? Lady Fireman Cross. Sir. Fireman Wilson. Sir. Fireman Green. Sir. Fireman Appleby. Sir. Firewoman Ingham. Sir. Fireman Cartwright. Sir. Fireman Quick.